Hello everyone, today we're going to start discussing end-to-end -end with Snowflake and Click, integrating the Click Suite with Snowflake for both data analytics and data integration. Now we're going to start today by talking mostly about how Click works with the integration component of getting Snowflake and Click working together. So how to get data into Snowflake using the Click data integration tooling. Now let's have a little talk about what Snowflake brings to the table. Now Snowflake is one of the most popular database systems uh, in the world right now. It is completely cloud-based. Uh, it is also very, very fast and very, very easy to use, which is why it's been gaining in popularity. So a little bit, how does it work? Well, you take data, and we're going to see some examples of that on the left side here, and you put that information into Snowflake, ideally using the Click integration tools, and you can create a data warehouse, data lake, you can do data engineering, you can share that data with others, uh, it has a platform for data science and building data applications, and also the fact that it's going to run on any cloud platform, whether it's Google, Amazon, or Microsoft, Having that data in memory running through their uh, high-end optimized engine allows Click to come at the end and serve as the visualization layer for working with the data, whether we're actually going to catalog the information, which is part of our data integration, or taking it all the way through visualization and alerting, which we'll talk about in section two. But as we can see here, Snowflake's going to offer a very valuable, very flexible, and very powerful solution for us to start building on uh, with the Click Data Integration Tools. So let's go ahead and pivot to talking about what exactly that architecture might look like when we're combining Click with Snowflake on the data integration platform. Well, what we're going to see here is an example of some of the data sources that you're going to find out in the in the world. So whether it's existing data warehouses that perhaps are on-prem, uh, software as a service vendors like Salesforce, uh, mainframe data, traditional database data, uh, SAP is a is a is a great source. Mainframe is another one that is a, a, a tough system to get data out of effectively and do reporting. So Click being able to use Replicate to connect to those systems, ingest it, create a, a real-time change data capture system, push the information into Snowflake, using Click Compose to go ahead and do those transformations to turn it into a best practices warehouse, and then go ahead and catalog that information with Click Data Catalyst. Then we can use Click, or really any BI tool at that point, to sit on top of that output and be able to start building the visualizations and exploring the data that we've automated now with this Snowflake pipeline. Discussing a little bit more about Click Replicate. Now, Click Replicate is a real-time delivery data vehicle for data into Snowflake, and it's going to be doing that with both uh, real-time change data capture, but it's going to do a lot more than just be able to move that, that information to keep it synchronized. Again, taking those data silos that we talked about on the left side, being able to take any of that content, keep it synchronized, and put it into Snowflake in real time, uh, do transformations along the way, do filtering, uh, being able to uh, create those schemas automatically. Click Replicate is going to add a lot of power to being able to take those source data elements, add value to it, keep it synchronized, and push that inform information into Snowflake, where we'll be able to take action with it and do other things. What kind of action? Well, for example, being able to automate the creation of data warehousing. So extending that process and having the conversation about it a little more, what are we talking about when we talk about automating data warehousing? Well, what Click Compose brings to the table is the ability to pick up that replicated data and being able to do best practice transforms. Whether we're going to create data marts, whether we're going to create data warehouses, we're going to manage all of those elements around the process of warehousing, the process of creating the surrogate keys, handling the uh, slowly changing dimensions, the type 1 and the type 2. If you have a data vault style or a Inman or a Kimball style warehouse that you want to put your data in the format of, we're going to be able to support those different methods. The fact that it manages all of the DDL and all of the script creation is where it brings the power. Because what we find is that, for example, with an SAP system, uh, the data requires a lot of work to get it ready for analytics when we're coming off of an ERP system. So all of those transforms can be automated and all of that scripting can be done and managed within Click Compose. 
Once we've completed the process of doing these data transforms with Compose and creating these best practice data warehouses and data marts, we're going to want to go and actually capture the information that we've created. And the way that we do that is with Click Data Catalyst. So it's going to allow us to go and scan all of those assets that we've created in Snowflake and create a shopping cart style process for users to come in, find information of interest, understand its lineage, understand its transformation, understand the uh, usefulness of the data, how many people find that information useful, how many people are using it, uh, understand its data integrity, being able to then choose that information and being able to quickly go and start the process of doing analytics, put it in a shopping cart and go ahead and launch that into Click or Power BI or Tableau, but being able to automate that process of understanding the data that's been created and finding an easy way to deliver it to that end user. Now that we understand what is in the data integration portfolio from Click, let's go ahead and watch this information in action. So what we're going to go ahead and do here for the purposes of the demo is we're going to connect up to an SAP system. We're going to extract that data into Snowflake. We're then going to run transformations using Compose to get it into a best practices data warehouse and data mart. And then we are going to go ahead and catalog that information and use it as a shopping cart style approach to allow a user to come in, pick information, and go through the process of consuming that data that we've collected. So let's go ahead and start walking through the process of what a Tunity Replicate is going to look like moving data off of an SAP system into Snowflake. So we go ahead and take a look at the SAP system we're going to use here and we can see it's just a, a good old SAP IDES server and it's going to be written into our, our Snowflake system. And at this point all I need to go do is pick the tables that I want to go and, and write over. And I can do that by coming in and looking at our sales and distribution information. I'll go ahead and get a list of the tables. I'll add everything and hit OK. And as we can see, I'm going to be go grabbing a whole bunch of tables from the ERP system that are related to customer uh, sales distribution information. Now at this point, I'm going to do a couple of different things. If I look at my task settings, I'm currently setting up to go ahead and do change processing. So once the data starts moving, it will replicate the base data set and then start watching SAP for new transactions that come in. So we'll go ahead and start this process by saying go ahead and run. And it will now start writing to Snowflake this information off of SAP. So as the process goes, what's going to do is it's going to reach out to Snowflake and, and dump those existing tables that I've written out there previously and start the process over of uploading the information off of the SAP system. Now the SAP system is running on-prem, uh, happens to be running on SQL Server, so we're going to be picking that information up and we're going to go ahead and write that information out um, <clears throat> into Snowflake. So we're going to go ahead and watch the process start here and if we take a look at full load, we can see that it's indeed taking the information and starting to load those tables already. So we've already loaded five out of the, uh, the 28 or so that we're going to write. And we can see the process of it slowly starting to move the information. Now, uh, again, this is a relatively small SAP system. So in current you know, performance is not what we're tracking here. It's what we're looking at is functionality. So we're almost halfway through now of loading this information. And once we take the information, we load it into Snowflake. What we're going to have happen then is we're going to move over from full load capability to going ahead and start tracking change processing. So that's where we actually start to see the data moving in real time. So we're almost done here with our data loads. We're going to pick up just a few more tables. Uh, and there we go, 97%. We're almost done. All right, so while this is moving over and we can see that our last table is now getting loaded, we'll move over to change processing. And now we're seeing the fact that uh, we have no operations, there's no incoming changes, full load is complete. So at this point, what we're going to do is pull over our SAP window and I'm going to start adding some information. So I'm going to go ahead and go into one of these data files, sales and distribution documents, and I'm going to go ahead and start executing that. So at this point, what will happen is as SAP starts to write these transactions, and we can see that that's processing, we'll see the queue start to load up here inside of the uh, uh, Tunity Replicate system. Uh, and what we're seeing now is the fact that it's indeed moved those information. So SAP is still running. Uh, it's still loading that information, but as that process happens, it's being written into Snowflake. So we've already done 579 inserts, 
uh, for the MAKT table. If we look down here, we've done 20 inserts into customer master, uh, material master, et cetera, et cetera. So those transactions now are being written live uh, from SAP into Snowflake. So that's how the change data capture works. Uh, the system's done, the transactions are still processing, uh, but that's it. That is an example of replicate moving data and keeping it synchronized from a source system, in this case SAP, into Snowflake. So now that we've landed that data from SAP into Snowflake, we're going to take the additional step of modeling it in a best practices way. And we're going to use that, do that using Click Compose. So what we can see over here is that information that we've written, the SAP DW demo, and now we're going to go through the process of doing the additional transforms to get that data ready uh, for consumption by the analytics user. So we can see some of the transform that we're doing visually here. Uh, we can actually come over if we want and look at all of the uh, attributes that have been scanned and created from the data. But if we come over and take a look at what that data warehouse is going to look like, we can see that it's it's going to it's estimating the number of records that we got, the keys, how many satellite tables it would have to create if we were going to be doing slowly changing dimensions. But most importantly, we can see the fact that it's going to create almost 1,650 SQL scripts to manage the process of creation of this warehouse. <clears throat> and additionally, it's going to take an additional step of going ahead and writing that information out to these data marts so that we can understand here when, what's going on. It's going to create the, the schemas. It's going to create the dimensions. Um, so it's going to go through this process of creating this information for us. And we can look here at the ETL commands. And this is all of the information, the DDL, that's being managed by the process. So again, what Click Compose brings to the table is taking that raw landed OLTP data and transforming it into analytics ready data. And that's really the value proposition here is that it's actually going to leverage Snowflake to do all of this calculation, all of this uh, com computation of transforming the data. And we're going to have these new schemas that created for analytics inside of Snowflake. The final step is being able to take this information that we've created in our data marts and in our data warehouse and be able to throw a business ready catalog on top of it. For example, if we come over here and take a look at that KNA1, so SAP Sales and Distribution KNA1 was part something that we've actually written out into the catalog. So I can come in and take a look at this information. And I can see a little bit about the tables, a little about the work that's been done here. But more importantly, if I click on the lineage, I can actually see where all of the transforms that have occurred behind the scenes to get this data where it is now. So we started with Replicate. Uh, we've done Compose, don't work with Compose. We've landed that information in Snowflake. We've created this table. Uh, we've created a view of this table that we're able also to do other things with, including writing it out to a click target. Now, if we go ahead and go take a look back, what are the things that a user could do with this information? Well, I might want to come over and just kind of take a look at the sample data, and that'll go and run, and I can see some of that, and that looks right. But most importantly, what users are going to do is be able to come over and do shopping cart. So this is information. I want to go look at my customer data. I just hit Add to Cart, and now I come over to my Take Action button, and immediately I can do Take Action with this data. I can publish it to ClickSense. I can publish it to Tableau. I can publish it out to Power BI. Uh, so it gives me options to go ahead and take advantage of this data and start the process of doing my analytics. So to go ahead and recap, what we've done here is taken data from that raw SAP information. We've gotten it ready for consumption with our data catalyst. Uh, cataloging engine. And in the process, we've used both Replicate to make sure that that data has been loaded and synchronized, Click Compose to turn that into actionable data mart, data warehouse ready information so that we can use now Click to go ahead and start consuming that Snowf Snowflake data. So what we'll see in the next section, part two, is how we actually leverage the Click Data Analytics component to best take advantage of the power of the Snowflake engine.